Welcome back to Dr. Vipin's Biotech and Bioinformatics Classroom. And today we continue our discussion with Sekinar Library. In the previous lecture, we had talked about the second R library and its application in analyzing a multi-fasta DNA sequence file, uh, which was here, if you see, R and Spore 20, DNA sequence analysis with second R. Today, we continue with the same uh, second R library, but this time we're going to analyze a protein sequence and our input file is going to be a multi-fasta protein sequence file. So let's get back to our studio and let's get started. So as always, in case your library is not installed and you're using it for the first time, you need to install the library. And for that, the command line mode is to say install.packages and then in round brackets and double quotes, the name of the library. In this case, the name of the library is second R. And uh, by this time, you also already know that uh, library installation is a one-time affair. And uh, of course, if you already use the library earlier, you just need to invoke the library into your program or call the library into your program, which can be done like this. So you say library and in round brackets, the name of the library. So library second R, when you do that, your library is invoked into your program. So the library is now loaded into your program and whatever commands are there in the library can now be called directly into your program. And then also, uh, if you have been regularly doing R, you would know that a good practice is to set up your working directory or the directory where your actual files are that you're going to read. So the command for setting up a working directory is set WD. So you say set WD and then you define your folder path where your file is. So in my system, it is an F partition and the folder name where my file that I'm going to read is R underscore human underscore genome. So this has to go in double quotes within the round brackets, the complete path. So what we've done till now is we have defined the library that we want to use. In case it is not installed, we've installed the library. Then we have invoked the library into our program so that we can use its commands. And now we've defined our working directory or the folder into which we are going to read the files from and write the files to. Right? So the input file to second R library is a FASTA file. This could also be a multi-FASTA file, meaning there are multiple sequences in the FASTA format one after the other. And the sequence could be DNA, RNA, or protein. And today we are going to read a multi-fasta protein sequence file. So we say prosec equals to read.fasta, and then in round brackets, file equals to the file name, spike and this multifasta.txt, comma, sec type equals to amino acid or AA, right? And remember the file name has to go on with the complete extension, right? So if it is a dot .fasta file, you could write dot .fasta. So if you want to see the file as is, you can say file.show. And as an argument to file.show, you can give the file name in double quotes, right? Here is our file. So this is our raw data file, the file that we've fed and read into the object name called prosec. And if you see here, this consists of six coronavirus uh, spike protein sequences from different species. So if you see here, a FASTA format will typically begin with a greater than sign. And then you have the top line that is called the def line. That is basically the uh, definition of the sequence in some sense. So it has a very short description of what the sequence is about. And the actual sequence begins from the second line onwards until the end of the sequence. So this is a multi-FASTA protein sequence file consisting of spike protein sequences from various coronaviruses, right? So let's see how also second R reads this file and divides it into uh, data structures. So here we are, we can say view prosec. So when you run this now, you will have your prosec. So there are six sequences in a FASTA file which have been read into six names mentioned in the def line of the FASTA format. So the sequences have been read into a function sec FASTA AA, which is sequence FASTA amino acid. And it has created a list of six entries where each of your sequences have gone. So the first sequence is at the first position in the list, the second one in the second position, the SARS bad coronavirus is third position, pangolin in the fourth position, and so on and so forth. And, and then it also shows you the sample of the first six amino acids of the individual sequences. 
So first, of course, we would want to know how many sequences are there in our multifasta file. So the command for counting the number of sequences that are there in your uh, file that you've uploaded is length and the object name into which you have read the file. So this becomes length pro sec and we equate it to num underscore sec. And then we print what is the value of num underscore sec. So when you run this here, you get a value of six. Number of sequences equals to six. Then you would want to see the names of the sequences. So the command for seeing the names of the sequences is get name. And N is capital here. So you have to be careful. Uh, uh, all languages are case sensitive. So the command for or the command or the function for getting the name of the sequences is get name with a capital N. And then, of course, the argument is the object into which you've read your file. So this is prosec again. And then you could print your names here. So you run this part here and you get your protein sequence name. So this is our little spike proteins. And from six different sources, you have uh, SARS-CoV-2, SARS-CoV, bat coronavirus, pangolin coronaviruses, two different uh, strains. And then you have W1V1 bat coronavirus sequence. Right? So annotation again would be the different of your FASTA sequence. So the command is get a not, and then again, the object into which you have read the file, when in this case it is prosec. So we say get a not prosec equals to annotation. So when you run this again, you'll get the same names again. But this time, if you see, this is in the form of a list. So very clearly, uh, annotations are stored in a list. So you have the first position in the list, the second position in the list, and so on and so forth. We have six sequences and six annotations. So now we have the names of sequences and we also have the annotation of the sequences. We would want to know what is the length of the individual sequences in our file. So that can be obtained using the command get length, right? And again, L is capital. And then of course, the argument to get length is the object into which you have read your file. So this is prosec. So len underscore sec equals to get length prosec will give you the length of the sequences in the multifaster file that you have uploaded. So here you are when you run this and you now obtain the values of len underscore sec. So this is the length of the amino acid sequences that you have put up in your file. So the first sequence is one, two, seven, three amino acids long. The second is one, two, five, five amino acids long. Likewise, one, two, six, nine, one, two, six, nine again, one, two, six, five. And the last one, the W1V1, that coronavirus sequence, that is one, two, five, six amino acids long. All this is fine. Now let's say you want to compute some basic statistics for the protein sequence of interest. And let's say we're looking for the protein sequence of interest number four, right? So this is your fourth sequence. The fourth sequence here is spike pangolin coronavirus GX protein sequence, right? So first, of course, we would want to print the name of the protein sequence that we're looking at. So you can, we already have the names vector here. So we can simply print names four, right? So you could say P R I N T print N A M E S names. Four. Right. So let me clear this out and then we can talk of this. So here you are, you run this. All right. So we're looking at this spike pangolin coronavirus GX protein, right? So in second R, there is an inbuilt command to calculate the basic statistics of a protein sequence. This is uh, AA stat, so you can say AA stat. And then as an argument, you can pass on the specific sequence that you want to look for. So in this case, we're looking at prosec four and the sequences are in the list format. So therefore we'll say prosec. And in double square brackets, we'll mention the specific protein sequence that we want to look for. In this case, it happens to be four. So we say this and we run this now. So now we run this to compute some of the basic statistics that can be calculated using a primary sequence of a protein. So here you are, you run this and, and what you get in return is, what you get in return here are several statistical parameters of the protein and also a graph that gives you the various physical chemical parameters of the protein in question. And you also get a graph that uh, shows you the various physical chemical characteristics of individual amino acids across the length of the protein. So here you are, you run this, you say A stat, and in the argument to A stat, you say prosec, and you're looking at the fourth protein in your file, that is your uh, spike pangolin coronavirus GX protein.
that is your spike pangolin coronavirus TX protein. So you run this now here. So in the results to this, you get a whole lot of statistics and a graph indicating the uh, primary sequence and the nature of amino acid that is there at each position in the primary sequence. If you look at the top first, of course, of the composition, so you get the composition, how many of each type of amino acids are there in your sequence. So this is your spike pangolin coronavirus GX protein, and you have... Uh, and likewise, tyrosine comes 55 times in the sequence. And then you have the proportions. This is basically to say what is the proportional representation of each type of amino acid into your sequence. So the proportions of tiny amino acids in the sequence is 0 0.30. The proportion with small amino acids in the sequence is 0.54. Likewise, aliphatic amino acids is 0.22. Aromatic amino acids is 0.125. Non-polar amino acids are 0.55. Polar amino acids are 0.44. Then you have charged amino acids, 0 0.17. Uh, basic amino acids, 0 0.093. And then you have uh, acidic amino acids, 0 0.085, right? And then, of course, you also have the calculated theoretical uh, isoelectric point for the protein. Isoelectric point is the point that is the pH at which the protein does not have a net charge and does not move beyond this pH range in a pH strip. So this is the 6.235931. So these are some of the basic physical chemical characteristics about the protein that you can calculate using second R uh, library. Then you also have a graph. So what you also generate is a graph. It starts from position zero, which is the first amino acid position until the last amino acid position in the sequence. And then for each amino acid, it basically plots the nature of the amino acid at that position here. So these are your tiny, the red ones represent your tiny amino acids, the yellow ones represent your small amino acids, then you have aliphatic, aromatic, non-polar, polar, charged, basic, and acidic. So this is basically a representation of the individual amino acids at a specific positions in your primary sequence and their chemical nature. So now you see that a whole lot of uh, physical chemical properties of the protein can be determined using the R second R library. So we have looked into the physical chemical properties of one of the sequences and also plotted for one of the sequences. Let's say you want to look into the physical chemical properties of all the sequences in the file and also plot for all the sequences in the file. So then in that case, you can use a for loop and I'll show you how it can be done. Here we go. So you remember, we already know the number of sequences in our file. We had used the length command to find out the number of sequences in the file. And we know that this is six. So let me just run it one more time so that we recollect what we had done. So this is what we have six sequences here, right? So num underscore sec is equal to six. So what we can do is then we could run a for loop. So we say for i in one is to num underscore sec. So this loop is now going to run six times. So this loop is now going to run for six times and every time the value of i will be incremented by one, starting from one. And within the loop, you give two operations. One is you're printing the name of the sequence. And second, you are uh, basically calculating the statistics and also the graph for the sequence. And then of course you close it here. So let's now run this to generate the physical chemical characteristics of all the proteins sequences in the file and also to generate as many number of graphs. And there you go. And you will have six graphs here. So if you want to save the graph, you can go to export and then say save image as. This will save it as a JPEG file or you could save it as a PDF. So you say save as PDF, right? So we stop here and the next time we meet, we'll talk about uh, Bioconductor Library. Bioconductor is a specialized suite of programs for biological data analysis, particularly for genomics. And we'll talk about a specific library in, uh, in Bioconductor that is called Short Reads that can be used to analyze next generation sequencing data. So we have now almost 30 video recorded lectures in R and I hope you guys are understanding. Please do mention in comments in case you want uh, more information or you want some specific topic to be dealt with in more details, right? Thank you very much and have a good day ahead. Thank you very much and have a good day ahead. And in case you're wondering what is the photo in the background, this picture in the background is of the 
bank of Cn River, and I have deliberately taken it in blur so that it looks even more beautiful. Right. So on that note, uh, I'll take leave. Thank you very much for watching. Thank <music> you.